chapter 14. And this is where we actually get into Thronehold. And there's just so much going on in here. So all the plague-ridden creatures are supposed to be escorted by the Lamplighter's Guild. And, and remember, we still have a carriage full of plague-ridden creatures. We have a better understanding that the Nullstone is being used to con confine those plague-ridden creatures, so we're not as concerned about them. But we still want to see these uh, plague-ridden creatures put to somewhere that's not going to cause problems. So, Luther is feeling kind of, I guess, at home because this is where he used to be. He used to be in Thronehold, and he's kind of having a little trip down memory lane, being back in Thronehold, and getting that you know sense of purpose again of where he is. And there are some particular places that Luther really wants to visit, and I feel like we're about to get a huge list before Zaxxus comes and interrupts. These trolleys are fairly large. They're, they have bench seats in them. They're basically the size of a gazebo is what they're explained. And and Volk kind of look at it like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then Zaxxus comes up and he's like, is that really Lyle? How do you run this thing? And Lyle kind of explains about how how the horseless trolleys work and his will-o'-wisp is what controls the steam engine in it. And Zax is like, well, what if I use my Phoenix Fire? And he's like, stop. He's he's so power hungry and he's on his high telling Zaxus that he can't use his Phoenix Fire because it's too powerful. So it has to be a Willowist or Canis that that steers these. I love Lyle's Eldrin's name is Tintin. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> Like, I feel like it fits perfectly with with the steam engine and everything. So, yeah, I gotta give him give him credit where you can get it. So, in the city of Thronehold, we do get some descriptions of it. Is the streets have cobblestones, and they're fairly smooth. Uh, there's steam that billows up from underground, and we actually find out that Thronehold was built on top of nullstone quarries. We find out that these quarries basically are tunnels to either catacombs or to sewers. So this place is really intricate. And Volk thought that he was stepping into the future, getting to Fortuna in comparison to Ruma. Now he's at Thronehold and he's just like, oh my gosh, I didn't think things could get bigger. So Zaxxus finally confronts Lyle about the fact that Lyle is an arcanist. And I'm sure, again, the the thoughts of hey you don't technically turn of age until you're 15 16 and i'm sure zaxus did the math and was like you definitely not of age yet but i don't, I don't think even zaxus would would kind of rain on his prey like that so we also get a pretty good idea of how the the whole city is laid out and like Elios was laid out in squares, everything was gridded. It was a very thought out, planned out city. Whereas Thronehold's kind of just thrown out, and we needed to connect this house to that house, and that business to this business, and that's kind of how it went. But they do have signs and pictures on those signs telling you which district you're in. So if you do get lost, you can kind of know where you're at at least. The lamplighters are mainly actually used to help people navigate around the city and they're also supposed to be helping with the trolleys. They finally do get to the prison as the trolleys have been hauling the carriages with. And we find out in the prison that they actually have refined nullstone. So it doesn't work unless you're inside of the building. So the suffocating feeling that everybody was getting while they were walking through the nullstone fields coming into Thronehold, everybody's expecting that same feeling and they don't actually feel it anymore because it's it, it only affects them if they go inside of it. It's much more targeted, which makes sense. You wouldn't want to rob the whole city of, of magic. Right. I wonder if they have regular jails. Because <laughs> I feel like these Nullstone jails would be like, hey, we're, we're, 
we're just gonna strip you of your power so like arcadis can't figure out how to be a human again without their magic so <laughs> i feel like the stone prisons are probably a lot less uh guarded or difficult than i think a normal prison would be it is very curious and you know you wouldn't want to waste a spot in one of the no stone prisons on a, a petty thief when you may need it for some arcanus who has magic that could be potentially dangerous exactly so this is for the first time where we actually i think we actually get a, a good idea of how the arcane plague affects things we do find out that the arcanus themselves never actually go like laughing mad as the mystical creatures themselves do, but we do get kind of get a timeline of how long it takes to for the plague to fully affect Arcanus, and it, it it takes effect to like six months up to a year. If there was a cure for the plague, there is some time to get to them. But immediately after they drop off these plague ridden creatures, Zelfie grabs Vulcanilia and takes them straight to the university library that's in Thronehold. And they're just trying to get more information about the world serpent. We find out that there are 13 creatures that will spawn again when there's another fundamental shift in magic. And these 13 creatures spawn in a very specific order. This event would basically be called the turning of an age. So we find out that star shards were originally made when the last turning of age occurred. Each of these creatures has a specific landmark that would show where it is. And the arcane plague is essentially that fundamental shift in magic to cause the cycle to begin again. And we also find out that they're called the god creatures. They commonly refer to the arcanists as gods, but the arcanists are essentially just normal people, normal Arcanists, who happen to bond with god creatures. So it isn't as limited who would be able to bond with them. And if this throw, threw me off of the numbers the first time, so there are 13 god creatures, but there are only 12 rune stones. The last god creature is mentioned to be the Apoch dragon, who doesn't actually bond, but is the final creature there to essentially kill everyone off and bring things back to to brevity. To, to wipe the earth of the other god creatures, I guess. Make things fair again, I guess. So but it's <laughs> very interesting. Um and just a something to note of why thirteen creatures, twelve rune stones, one of the creatures does not bond. We do want to thank you for listening today and thank our editor Dan Mackison. You can find this podcast on Podbean, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, pretty much anywhere a podcast is playing. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook as well. And we do want to give a special thank you to the Frith Chronicles fandom as we get into all of the bestiaries and all of these different mystical creatures through these sections. So they are going to be a huge help. I know once the bestiary book comes out, which hopefully is again sometime here in the near future, uh, and I believe they're still taking orders for the bestiary as well. Um, we should be getting more information about these mystical creatures. If you want to get in touch with us, you can send us an email at frithguildpod at gmail.com. Or you can shoot us a message on Facebook or comment on our Facebook page. Scott, was there anything else you like to add? Check back next week for a new next step in the Pokemon journey. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you guys next week.